Friday, September 8th, 2023. As always, we are running through a bunch of AI papers published today. One was not today, one was older. Um, but I've got some GPT summaries of them going. And if you want to read these summaries, as always, check my Substack link in description. Let's get to it. Uncovering Drift in Textual Data, an unsupervised method for detecting and mitigating drift in machine learning models. Amazon paper. Um, interesting. Da -da -da -da. Two step process for drift detection. In the first step, they encode a sample of production data as the target distribution and the model training data as the reference distribution. In the second step, they use a kernel based statistical test that utilizes the maximum mean discrepancy distance metric. Okay, to compare the reference and target distributions and estimate any potential drift. Also identify the subset of production data that is the root cause of drift. So training versus production data. Don't you grab, I mean, this is a, so this is a production use case. This is like if you're businessy Amazon, right? How is the training data different to the using like artificial training data? Like what's the deal with training data versus production data here? Like is production data their test? data or they just is it just newer is it not the same source distribution as the training data i'm confused experiments to evaluate effectiveness binary classification model they trained period of years divided into monthly buckets calculated the amount of drift between the model's development data and the data from each monthly bucket so i think the uh, production data test data is just newer stuff Significant negative correlation between estimated drift and model performance metrics, indicating that the amount of drift increased. As drift increased, the model's performance significantly decreased. All right, this is kind of whatever. Um, not not for me. I'm sure it's useful in theory to for training, but whatever. Opinion GPT modeling explicit biases in instruction tuned LLMs. Uh, Opinion GPT is a web demo that aims to make biases in language models explicit and transparent. They acknowledge inherent biases from the data they're trained on. Instead of suppressing these biases, they provide a tool to explore and understand them. To train Opinion GPT, they derived a biased aware instruction tuning corpus from English language Reddit. They selected 13 subreddits that follow the Ask X schema, where only members of a specific demographic can answer questions. They collect an instruction response. Oh, interesting. I, I didn't know that was a thing, like ask a given demographic. They collect an instruction response pairs from these subreddits with the instruction being the post title and the response being the most upvoted direct response. Resulted in a corpus where all answers were approved by the respective demographic specific subreddits. Fine tune the Llama V1 model using this bias aware corpus. During training and inference, model includes a mention of the specific bias in the prompt, allowing users to specify the desired bias when requesting a response. Interesting. You can specify the bias you want it to come from. Qualitatively evaluated the model's response to different questions and biases, showcasing a variety of outputs that reflect the biases represented in the training data. Also conducted a quantitative evaluation using the built bull data set. Is there an actual web demo? Like available. This is kind of sick. I mean, it's not like my research thing or anything. Yeah, I think there's a web demo. Let's uh, check it out for a second, shall we? That's the wrong app. What am I doing here? Oh, video popping off, as you can see. Let's link is broken um, opinion GPT a very biased GPT model oh, let me get my screen smaller here okay enter a question or instruction below there's examples accept cookies demographics Select bias dimension. Um, 
we have geography, demographics, why is housing so expensive? Demographics, we're doing this on age. Teenager response, because the government is greedy and wants to make more money. Person over 30, because the government has made it so. They have made it illegal to build new housing, and they have made the process of building new housing so difficult and expensive that it is not worth it. They've also made it difficult to build housing in the city, so people have moved further and further out. This drives up the price of housing in general. Response of an old person. The answer is simple. It's not. Okay, this is great. This is so much fun. I love this. Um, this is so cool. Uh <laughs> I'm going to send this to some buddies. This is, this is fantastic. Um, ask for an, we're going to just play with this for a second, guys. Sorry, we're getting distracted here. Um, do, 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 do. Some good questions to ask. Uh, what's the best type of food? No. Um, what's your biggest pet peeve? And let's go with geography. Germany, people who don't know how to drive. A person from the USA, people say literally in place of figuratively. Response from person in Latin America, people who don't know how to use the word like properly. Middle East, people who don't know how to drive. This is just like, this is this is probably not, is this good or is this bad? Is this website good or bad? Um, if it were only giving one bias, bias and if it were not telling you about said bias, I would say this website's bad. But given like that it's giving multiple, I prefer more like like the fact that it's only four areas right here, Germany, USA, Latin America, Middle East, really restrictive. Um, but I'd love to see this expand over time and just get like a good rating on people's thoughts. I mean, it's trained off Reddit as actual people it's being trained off of. It's not just like some researcher putting in their own opinions of what that person would say, that network would say. Would say. Um, Um, can men and women be just platonic friends? Gender. Also, a man. I've had a few female friends, but I've never been able to trust them. I'm not sure if it's because I'd be a fool to trust a woman or if it was because I was raised to be a misogynist. Jesus Christ. Lots of women. I think it's possible, but it'd be pretty rare. I've never had a platonic male friend. This is... This is so sad. All these responses are so sad. Um, this website is so cool, though. God damn. I'm going to... This is so much fun. Um, sorry, I'm going to... I'm going to... Uh, I'm getting distracted here. Might be. But, um, yeah, this is... This is sick. Wow, I like that. This is so much fun. I'm going to bookmark this. Um, I'm going to have fun with this later, I think. This is just hilarious. Okay, anyways, um, moving on. What were we doing? We were doing literature review whatever stuff, right? Sorry. Uh, okay, my timer's all messed up now. It's been so long. No train still gain. Unleash mathematical reasoning of large language models with Monte Carlo tree search guided by energy function. Uh, proposes a method to enhance math reasoning ability of LLMs without need for fine tuning or, or RL. Core idea is to reformulate LLMs as a residual energy based model. What does that mean? And use an energy function to guide the reasoning process. The authors apply Monte Carlo tree search guided by the energy function to balance exploration and exploitation. Are they using like the probabilities of the logit outputs and using that to guide a money code tree search, which is not any different than just regular output, is it? I'm confused. Fine tune a base LLM using supervised instruction response pairs. Then they reformulate their LLM as a residual EBM by modifying the distribution with an energy function. I don't know what that means. The energy function is trained using noise contrastive estimation which discriminates between real responses and responses generated by the LLM. Proposed two sampling methods, rejection sampling and sub-output sub sampling. I don't know what's happening here. I have no clue. Experiments on two mathematical reasoning benchmarks. Uh, they compare their method with other baselines. Uh, show that their method achieves a substantial improvement in the pass at first try accuracy. 
compared to the base LLM. Also achieves comparable performance to the state-of-the-art models without the need for additional fine-tuning or RL, which is so cool. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm checking the response for that. Um, anyways, um, yeah, this one's, don't get me wrong, AI is going to be doing math pretty soon. Um, I mean, it's doing math now. AI is going to be like replacing mathematicians pretty soon. Not replacing, but like edge replacing, I don't know. Um, it's gonna be so good at proving, it's absurd. Just so good at proving, I'm very excited for that. Um, but not my cup of tea for this paper. Large language models as optimizers. Google paper, what's going on here? Do you mind? Introduces optimization prompting, a framework that leverages LLMs as optimizers, to demonstrate the effectiveness in various case studies, core assertion is that they can be used as powerful optimizers by describing optimization tasks in natural language and instructing the LLM to generate new solutions. Based on the problem description and previously found solutions, process is iterative with LLM generating new solutions, evaluating them and incorporating them into the optimization trajectory for the next step. They design a meta prompt that contains the optimization problem description and the optimization trajectory. Uh, Description provides the LLM with necessary information that is in the task, while the optimization tra trajectory allows LLM to build upon previously found solutions, generates new solutions by sampling from the meta prompts, and balances exploration and exploitation through temperature tuning. Results demonstrate effectiveness. This isn't that crazy, not gonna lie. Um, so optimization means problem solving here, generally, because it doesn't specify. It doesn't like, talk, is it talking about actual like algorithm creation or machine learning models or anything? I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, I think it's just problem solving in general. They're just getting LLMs to sp not just chain of thought reasoning, but actual problem solve with goals. They did a traveling salesman problem and a linear regression. Oh, maybe they use linear regression? The LLM made a linear regression to do a traveling salesman problem? I'm confused. Find good quality solutions by leveraging the optimization trajectory. The authors also applied the method to prompt optimization tasks where the goal is to find a prompt that maximizes task accuracy. The optimized prompts outperform human design prompts and achieved high performance on benchmark tasks. Yeah, so this is a problem solving, a general problem solving framework, basically. Um, they've figured out how to make LLMs better at problem solving. Um, this is kind of cool. It's a little long, but I feel like it's very skimmable. So I think I'm going to download it and maybe read it. Um, I also want to send it to some buddies, I think. So what am I looking for? Large language. It may be cited. I think it's a reasonable, just offhand site for the one paper I want, the big one I want to work on. We'll see. Fundamental limitations of alignment in large language models. This was the thing that was the old one, August 1st. Proposed a theoretical framework called behavior expectation bounds to analyze the alignment of LLMs. The goal is to ensure they behave, blah, 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 blah. Assertion, for any behavior that has finite probability of being exhibited by the LLM, there exist prompts that can trigger the LLM into outputting this behavior, with the probability increasing with the length of the prompt. Uh, mechanic. So they propose the use of the BEB framework to analyze the behavior of LLMs when prompted with different inputs. Implies the alignment process that only reduces undesired behavior but is not eliminated completely is not safe against adversarial prompting attacks. So it can be exploited. RLHF is susceptible. Not guaranteed. LLMs can resist misalignment during conversation. Yeah, um, if you're into prompting and alignment and stuff, I guess this is a cool paper, but I might save it to site later, potentially. Um, but I'm not going to read it. My phone got to stop turning off. I'm using my phone as a timer and it's just not efficient.
FLM 101 be an open LLM and how to train it with a hundred thousand dollar budget? Wait, wait, a hundred thousand bucks for a hundred one billion parameter model? That's crazy. That's that's efficient. I'm pretty sure. I think that's crazy efficient. Oh, I didn't notice it at first. I wasn't sure what the whole point of this title was. But that makes sense. Um, okay. They address the challenges of high computational costs and evaluation. Propose a growth strategy to significantly reduce training costs where number of parameters expands from a smaller size to larger ones. Demonstrate that it can be trained with a 54.8% time saving compared to training from scratch. Introduce system a systematic evaluation benchmark to address the, the IQ of LLMs. Oh, okay, cool. Authors argue existing knowledge-oriented evaluations are not sufficient to measure intelligence and propose a more comprehensive approach. Built upon free LM architecture. Highlights that they achieve training stability by leveraging insights from tensor program theories and loss prediction. Grid search of hyperparameters using a proxy model and transfer the optimal hyperparameters to the 16 billion parameter model. Comparable performance to GPT-3 in GLM 130B, especially in the IQ benchmark evaluations. All right. Cool. Be a fun one to read, I bet. Not for me, but the phone keeps turning off. God damn it. Fitness approximation through machine learning. We doing evolution stuff now? Novel approach to performing fitness approximation and genetic algorithms using machine learning models. The goal is to reduce the computational cost of evaluating fitness in GAs genetic algorithms, particularly in domains where fitness computation is expensive, such as game simulators. The proposed method involves maintaining a data set of individuals and their actual fitness values, continually updating this data set through the evolutionary run. Fitness approximation ML model is trained on this data set and used to estimate the fitness values of individuals in the GA population. They evaluate their approach on two games implemented in the gymnasium framework, Blackjack and Frozen Lake. In both games, the actual fitness scores are computed by running simulations in the game simulator. ML models are trained on the data set of individuals and their actual fitness scores and then used to approximate fitness values of the population. Improves runtime of evolutionary runs while maintaining fitness scores that are either identical or slightly lower than those obtained using the fully run GA. Implications of fitness approximation using ML models be a powerful tool for reducing computational costs of evaluating fitness in genetic algorithms. Okay, I I get I get it, but this is so silly. Like, what's just if you have an actual problem you want to solve, there's a reason why we're switching to ML now, why we're now using ML. We're no longer using GA, period. Like, it, it, the only reason to use GA now, genetic algorithms, is if you specifically want to study evolution. If you want to study the effects of evolution, evolutionary game theory, all this stuff. Like, um, it doesn't make sense to, I mean, I, I guess the thing you want to study is a quirk of evolution, but you don't want to spend all the compute resources through an actual GA, an actual genetic algorithm. And I guess you could use ML to speed up your process. And no, this makes sense. Sorry. Yeah, no, this is, it's a cool research tool. Um, you wouldn't use this if the goal is just to solve a problem, to, to do a tree search to, to optimize something. But you would use this if your goal is to study evolutionary behavior specifically, but with low computational resources. If that's what you want to do, uh, be my guest. Use this to speed up the process and not have to use all that crazy amount of compute from a GA. Um, go ahead, but it's kind of whatever. Not the most exciting paper, I guess. Beyond XAI, obstacles towards responsible AI. I take I read way too much stuff about how bad XAI is. I need to just ignore it. 
explores limitations, implications of limitations, technical challenges, explore connection between like fairness and privacy and other values. Okay, whatever. My phone is turning off so damn quick. I need it to, I'm trying to use it as a timer right now, but it's annoying the hell out of me. Anthronet, conditional generation of humans via anthropometrics. Novel human body model called Anthronet, which is capable of generating a wide range of human body shapes and poses. Oh, this is not, not my, not my thing. Um, all right, whatever. Damn it, it's like turning off. A tutorial on the non-asymptotic non theory of system identification. Uh, tutorial focused on linear models. Goal of system identification is to estimate the parameters of a linear time series model given observed input-output data. Paper addresses the problem of providing finite sample guarantees of the accuracy of parameter estimates. This is like a time series paper, basically. It's like a time series thing. All right, whatever. A function interpretation benchmark for evaluating interpretability methods. Introduces find function interpretation and description, a benchmark suite for evaluating automated interpretability methods. Uh, da, da, da set of over 2,000 procedurally generated function interpretation problems spanning different domains, such as... So if people propose new interpretability methods that are automated, you can run it through this data set of functions and metadata and whatnots and check. All right, whatever. Um, that's it for today. Uh, read all this stuff as well as the prereq knowledge and citations as always shitty citations are probably incorrect over on my sub stack end of video